Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is free text invoice, enhanced posting performance, Dynamics 365 finance and operations. My name is Brad and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event and in the Q&A segment near the end. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Saurabh Kuchal, Senior Solution Architect. Saurabh, over to you. Hey, thank you, Brad. Thank you for facilitating this session. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Today, the topic is free text invoicing. We call it FTI in short as well, and we will all talk about how we can enhance the performance of this book. Uh, free text invoice posting. We will share multiple features and uh, I have the crew with me. I have Ryan Carlson, Jason Dinam, Kerry Michelle, Eric Pigors and myself here uh, and we will all help you to share all the knowledge we got here in this tech talk. Just a quick brief what we will cover in this tech talk. We have added multiple performance improvements to the batch posting of source documents in order to run free text invoicing more efficiently. This particular feature, the first feature we will show, this is gonna affect uh, free text invoicing in the first, but as we go in future, more and more uh, source document postings will also be added into it. When this feature is enabled, batch posting is actually split into smaller units of work, preventing system degradation and also lessening the chances of issues due to database disconnections. So let's dive in. This is implementation guide. Uh, this has written by fast track team and it has guidance pretty much on all the areas from initiate, build, design, deploy, and all the way to operate phase. And it also covers pretty much from both finance and operations as well as on the customer engagement, all Dynamics 365 apps. Highly recommend this guide. Please keep it handy at your end. If you are looking for something, see if you can find it here. And this is a great reference uh, document. Cool. Let's see what we will cover today, right? Uh, as I mentioned in previously, we will uh, talk about the free text invoicing, the performance improvements we are doing. We will first understand what is the problem today. Um, then we will talk about the solution, how we are approaching the uh, design of it, as well as uh, we will see what changes we have done in the whole uh, posting process. We will have a demo. Ryan will do the demo for us uh, of FTI, how the new solution works and everything. We will also share other two features here after the demo, uh, which are also going to help in the performance with the free text invoicing. We will also share some key takeaways, uh, the recommendations uh, you can think of, which we have gathered based on many, many projects experience. So please stay tuned for key, key takeaways. We will have good time for Q&A and live Q&A as well. So I highly recommend you guys, please uh, ask questions in the Q&A chat. We will answer them on the side as well as whatever the top uh, questions we get, we will definitely answer them live as well in the end. All right, so what is the problem? The problem is performance, right? You, you must have got that so far. So all the enterprise customers, like big customers, they do bring high volumes, like millions of invoice lines. They need to process them in timely manner, like monthly billing is happening. You are getting, let's say, your utility bill, and the company needs to process those bills in a timely manner. Uh, I'm talking about the same thing with from the scale perspective too. So it is not about the infrastructure. Uh, you give high power to it and uh, you think like posting or code will scale. That's not how it works, right? So this, this particular feature we will share, we will talk about uh, is about changing the process and that's where we are able to get that scale with, with this feature. So 
and without this feature, even if we add more infra, we are not able to get that scale. So th this will help with that. Another impact on the performance comes to no ledger posting operation. So we'll we'll hit into that more in the next slide as well. But uh, more importantly, uh, there are two types of uh, roles, and we will talk about those. But yes, if uh, my posting is not done, I cannot send the invoices to customers. I cannot send them the invoice statements. I cannot send the pay. I cannot do the payment settlements for them. And this is really important, right, for uh, enterprise customers' readiness in terms of uh, having the system available and work on timely basis. What is the another problem? The separation of duties. Uh, I did hit on the this one last in the last slide too, but little more. We have two different roles: AR clerk, who is accounts receivable, managing all the invoicing, recordings, and doing the payments. And there is a accountant who is also looking for free text invoice posted ones. He is primarily looking into ledger transactions, the vouchers, or any errors related to on the journalizations or dimensions kind of things. So these are two different roles in an organization, and they both have different needs from the free text invoices or any of those documents, right? So that's the idea behind how we do separation also of these duties so that they both are not blocked on each other. So we will hit into both the problems, performance as well as separation of duties with the solution. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that solution too. Before that, what we are seeing based on the telemetry where the free text invoices is getting used heavily. These are some of the industries which we see they are using free text invoice much more than any other industries. Utilities, right, which I did hit uh, earlier as well, Sur services or subscription based uh, companies, medical billings, leases, rentals, donations, which are recurring, and workforce or like uh, where you are giving services uh, on the recurring basis, those kind of things. They all are great examples, and there could be many, many more. Yours and uh, your customers may be using it for something other in some other industry too. So definitely free text invoices are highly recommended, something you need uh, without inventory, uh, simple free invoicing, so and can bring a scale to your uh, environment. Let's talk about this solution now, right? We did hit into, hit into the problem, uh, performance and separation of duties. How, how do we solve this problem? I will give the floor to Ryan. Uh, Ryan, let's talk about the solution here. All right, thanks, Sarb. Uh, my name is Ryan Carlson. I am one of the product managers for the Dynamics 365 Finance application. And this is a feature that I was allowed to be a part of, and it's a wonderful uh, enhancement for performance in this uh, feature area. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide <clears throat> that gives the current of um, process, I guess, around a free text invoice. These are all just different units that are comprised of activities along a free text invoice document in the life cycle of it. So obviously, once a doc, uh, this document, the free text invoice is created, um, there's some accounting distributions that can get created with that. Um, there's a process to calculate totals. Um, there's a journalized process, and that's really generating that full accounting in our sub ledger that um, is representing that full voucher transaction that we're going to send off to the general ledger. Um, that has to happen alongside of the posting. So a posted invoice document is also where you record that invoice to your accounts receivable subledger. And so today we can see that bottom kind of grouping. All of that work is happening generally in a one big unit, uh, one big unit together, a single database transaction essentially. And so as this is again looking at the life of just one document as it would move through all the activities that need to happen for that one document. So as mentioned uh, a bit ago, the industries that are using free text invoices often are billing systems that will bring in um, when the billing is completed. They've got to represent that as an invoice to their customers and they can bring that in and, and represent that with the free text invoice interface. And so they'll have thousands and thousands, if not a, you know millions of lines total in a, in a month, they may have to process. And so one by one, each one of those documents is doing all of this work in one transaction, and then it can start the next document, and then it can start the next document. And even in a multi-threaded environment, there's contention that happens. 
So that's that's the root of the problem that we're attempting to solve with this feature. So let's go ahead and look at the next slide. So the enhanced process with this uh, feature turned on um, allows for a little more granular breakdown of those units of work. Um, uh, the, the two that are impacted the most with the feature that we'll demo um, are in darker green subledger being posted in the from the documents path. And then on the accounting path, we're trying to separate those two units in their own flow. Um, so the document can have its own life where we create that document. We do that total calculation. We'll see another feature later on after the demo that's helping with that. Um, and then the subledger recording it to your accounts receivable. That can happen and we can disconnect the underlying accounting activities that are happening and put those into their own units of work, their own database transactions essentially, and let those occur so much more efficiently with this feature on that all of that work together happens um, with very little, uh, much less contention as, uh, as that's happening in a large batch of documents. Okay, so as you can imagine, when we disconnect these two experiences and talking about recording something to the subledger that accounts receivable invoices is recorded for a customer. So now against that customer, there's a bunch of invoices and that goes out on their statement, but that accounting is disconnected. Now, if we take that and make that its own unit of work, um, that is a bit of a disconnect in the application and we have to be able to um, deal with that disconnect if there's some error state or even if there's just a delay and there's a queue of work piled up. Um, so that's what we can see on the next slide. Um, it's one of the new forms that's being delivered. Um, so actually, before we get to that, I guess to see what this feature is, we'll turn look at this in the demo as well. So this is the name of the feature that you'll see in feature management. So the enhanced performance for source document accounting framework. And as also mentioned, we want to enable other documents besides just free text invoice, but this is our first one that we're going to uh, um, tackle. So dealing with that, <clears throat> there is a new form that we'll demo as part of the flow. And that's this documents pending accounting form that we can use to look at any error states um, and also just things that have uh, landed in the queue and are not completed yet. Because this tells us we have a free text invoice, it's got an invoice document ID that's been generated in our AR subledger, but the journalization step is not yet completed. Um, and that means it doesn't have all the full accounting generated on the accounting level. So with that, let's go ahead and I think the next slide we can jump into the demo. So I'll share my uh, demo environment and get started. All right, so in my demo environment, the first screen I have open is just the feature management workspace. So in our workspaces, feature management is where we can turn on any new features that exist in the product as uh, each monthly update comes out or each update of the application comes. Um, and this is the name of the feature. And again, the reason that we're naming that is we intend for other documents that utilize our source document framework uh, to be able to take advantage of that um, improved performance. And again, what that is trying to accomplish in the description here tells us it's just splitting up the work into smaller units um, and preventing issues because of database disconnections, et cetera. So in my environment, I already have this feature turned on. It's enabled and running. So now that I have that, let's jump into the free text invoice list page. Here's where I can create a new free text invoice document. And let's just clarify what this document is for those that may not have been in here before. Um, this is not a sales order, but it's, it's very similar to a sales order in that I can record some sale or record that invoice I bill to a customer that I have in my environment. It's something that I deal business with. Um, it does not have any connection to inventory, so you can't sell items, but I can just simply, as I go through the demo, I'll create a new document. I'll pick one of my favorite customers. Let that populate. And then as you can scroll down, the invoice lines that I can generate are simply that, a free text description that has all the detail I can put onto this invoice line. So I just have a test line that I'm gonna add and I can specify a main account where I want that charge to occur against, uh, the revenue to come in against. So I'll just put in a simple amount, save that. And now I'm ready to, to post this document. So as I plan to do my posting, 
here's where we uh, will intercept with this feature. It has to run in the background in batch. So this batch processing is turned on. And again, we're just testing a simple one document. But as you can imagine, a number of invoices get created or imported into the system, uh, potentially from those uh, other billing systems that might be utilized for for that those industries. Now I have a large batch of these invoices and I, I will send them off and tell that entire batch to go ahead and post. And they will utilize that new, that's when we can utilize the new uh, feature that we've just described. So when it's not running a batch, it'll do the old code path and it'll generate everything directly in one in one go, one large database transaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one set to run in batch. Let's click okay. And we'll just give it a little bit of time. You can see that it's now added to the batch queue. So this invoice uh, is sent to the batch. It'll let the batch system go ahead and process it. And we notice the prior um, most recent document was highest number was 30. So we should expect 31 uh, to be the invoice as we refresh. <clears throat> Get this one more minute for the environment to refresh. And sure enough, there's invoice number 31 is now um, generated. Uh, in this environment. Um, one Now the next uh, part, we can see there's a difference of the accounting status column. That's a key thing I'm going to call out that's different for this feature turned on. So the invoice is now posted. I can look at this customer and they'll have an invoice of 31 generated for that customer. However, the accounting is still in process. It is not complete. To take a look at the difference of what that means, let's take a look at invoice 28 that is completed. I can see from selecting that invoice 28 is completed, I can check the accounting. Uh, and again, one way to look at it is simply looking at the accounting that's been generated. I have a full subledger journal number that's been recorded for that invoice. So everything that's going to be transferred to the general ledger is here uh, fully recorded. Um, you can look at a preview of that accounting. Um, so if I click on the same button for an invoice that's in process, the view accounting will only give us a preview of what it should be. There is no subledger journal number uh, specified yet for this preview. It's just simply a uh, expectation of what that accounting should be as it gets moved to the general ledger. Let's take another look and here's where we can um, jump over to the new form that I mentioned that we're delivering with this feature. This form is found in general ledger module under the periodic tasks. Here's a new form called documents pending accounting. I have this form opened and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this form. And sure enough, now I have invoice number 31 is now in the list in the queue. It is in process, it is not complete. But we may notice that we can also see documents that have an error state. So we can see invoice 29, accounting state is an error. And I can drill in and look at what the error message is and why I have a problem. So. Here I can see that task center 09 is not an allowed value, so there's an accounting error. The AR clerk may have no idea what to do with that, and so that's a wonderful separation of our duty. I can have my accountant fix the distributions. So now I can see the other feature is at the top, I have a button to view the distributions for this document. And there we were talking about um, cost center 09 is not an allowed value. That is incorrect. So let's clear that out, and I can see it looks like maybe I mistyped and it should have been cost center seven. That's an allowed value. So I'll specify cost center seven for this document on the accounting line. Go ahead and save that change. And I do want to call out one other difference. As I look at the view distributions, there's no other changes that we can make. We can't tell it to be a different amount. Those edits won't be saved. The only thing we can change is the ledger account. Um, I, can, I can fix the accounting, save that process, and now if I'm ready, I can one by one use this other button that's available on this form is to generate that accounting one by one. So I'll go ahead and do that for this invoice 29. And you can see that it's been submitted for processing. So I can go ahead and refresh that. <clears throat> 29 will disappear from my queue. And if I wanted to switch back, I can look at invoice 29. I'll refresh my invoice from the invoice page. And that lets that process, we'll give it just a moment. And there enough, sure enough, invoice 29 is now a completed state. So that accounting is fully there. Again, I can look at the accounting. They can see that everything is existing and the subledger journal number has been assigned. This one is fully ready to transfer to the general ledger. 
uh, and move to that accounting there. So now let's take a look at what if this list was um, large, if I had a, several thousand invoices been posted to the AR subledger, but they've not completed the accounting step. So there's a, a I haven't mentioned, but there is a background process that's taking care of all of that work to move data from, um, or to generate all that accounting data for us once we have these invoices that have been posted. So how do we handle that? Well, we're using the process automation as a background process. Um, process automation administrative page is found under system administration, under the setup group. Towards the end is process automation. That page will open. Initially, it'll be on a scheduled task. There may not anything scheduled in your environment, but there is always a background processes that we're delivering um, in each new application release. And the one that's being utilized for that process uh, to journalize and generate that accounting is the accounting framework processor. Right here, we can see is in our in our environment. It's up and running, and it'll run every 15 minutes. So that queue of documents will get cleared out every 15 minutes by default. You're, as an administrator, you're fully able to come in and edit that, make that um, interval, um, whatever it seems to make sense for that business. Okay. So with that, I will- And just to add, uh, yeah. just to add here, right, everyone, you can see the most recent results. It will also show you how many records it processed or were there any issues even here. You can see the log, view log, success or error right here as well. You can obviously find it in one of the bad job too, but this is one of the easiest way uh, for an accountant to go back and find out, okay, how did my uh, journalization accounting happen here? And by the way, if you notice here, we will hit this into uh, later part also. Two down, you will see batch transfer to subledger journals as well. This is also required as part of uh, completing the posting process ultimately to hit the GLs. And that also is coming from here as a background process. Yes, thanks, sir. All right, we'll turn it back to Sarb. Okay, let me share my screen back. All right, thank you, Ryan, uh, for the demo. Uh, this was helpful. Steam, we saw right how we can have the divide and conquer and uh, get the required performance and get the required separation of duties, right? We we looked at um, how we can just do the journalization and also talk about uh, how can we fix it. Even the posting has happened, we can fix the dimensions and those kind of things on that invoice. Okay, so this is a good one. Uh, free text invoice posting performance, right? How do we see without this feature and with this feature, the comparison, right, in the throughput? So when we say performance is the main thing, right, for building this whole feature, how do we see it's impacting on the numbers? We did check it with various numbers. By the way, when we processed it, it we gave it the volume. If you do less number of invoicing, you may not see the impact. If you try with 50, 100,000 invoices, you may not see the impact, but if you try with like half a million invoicing or million invoices, you will see definitely this kind of difference for sure. And within those free text invoice headers, we also did various uh, combinations of one line per header or five lines per header, or we went above like 30 lines per header. As you see the graph with more lines, you are getting better throughput per lines. And when we enabled this feature, we could see really 2x, 3x, 4x type of difference in the throughput of the same number of lines. So with one line, obviously the uh, throughput difference was lesser, but as the 30 lines, you can see the difference between blue and orange line right here, it's way, way more. So that really helped uh, to achieve the throughput our customers, our large customers were looking. They have been using this feature and uh, this is this is really uh, a big step to get the achieve uh, optimal performance if you're looking for that. All right, so let's talk about next steps, right? So we did talk about this feature a lot 
Uh, now we have a few more things to share. Uh, the critical ones. We'll talk about some new features as well, but before that, let's get into what are the next business process coming, right? Uh, if you are using free text invoicing, this is definitely must for you. But if you are looking for something else, these are the ones which are coming next. Vendor invoices. This is where next uh, in the next uh, waves, uh, this will be the next one which will be using the same divide and conquer approach to split the posting into a posting and as well as journalization. Same with product receipts, then project advance journal, bank statements, and there could be others too based on the feedbacks and based on how these other postings process goes. These all are source document related process, so you will not see uh, sales order or purchase order here, but yes, if you think those are also a uh, thing we should follow in the same approach, please use ideas portal. Give your voice so that uh, uh, those also can be heard and also can be bl bubble up uh, to achieve similar concept to divide and conquer those posting process performance. OK, so this is the feature we just demoed uh, enhanced performance for source document accounting framework. This is the feature name you will see in the feature management. And let's talk about the availability of it, uh, how, how it will come. So it was in preview uh, on the flighted, I would sell it private preview in 10 or 29 with 10 or 30. Uh, you can have it available in your environment now, which is GA already in October. And as the time goes, uh, based on the feedback, uh, we will definitely make it released in the coming time. And ultimately, it will become a mandatory feature for free text invoicing. So we also said we'll show two more features. This is the second feature, guys, uh, the calculation of tax. So what happens whenever the free text invoice posting is happening? Behind the scene, it is doing the calculations for totals and taxes multiple times. I said tax my bad the for totals. So and what we have done with this feature is we have improved the cash use of that calculation. We are seeing some good results with this feature as well, so highly recommend it. If you are looking something quick wins, this is the easy one. You enable this feature free text invoice posting performance for totals calculation and it will use that in the posting time in the batch. There is one more. Oh no, this is this is the availability for the same one totals calculation. So this will be also in public preview in 10 or 30. Then it will from 10 or 30. This is the major release where it will be released off by default. But from the next major release, which will be in October 23, it will be on by default. And then in future, we will make this feature also mandatory. Third feature. Third and last, this is the last feature we will talk about today, <laughs> but this is the most important one. I will call it right. The batch posting process improvement. What we have done with this feature, we are using one of the uh, multi threading pattern, which is called top picking pattern to manage the number of threads to allocate to the posting process. This uh, when you enable priority based batch scheduling feature, which uh, basically removes the batch group and batch server allocation. This feature is really important to use in case of pretext invoicing posting. What it will do, it will allow, it will allocate the fixed number of threads for your posting process, and in that way, you can get the optimal performance and avoid any system downtimes or crashes if you go with PBS on and without this feature. So, when will this feature be available? This feature will be available in 10 or 31. It will come in January and at that moment it will be in public preview and by the time it's major release in April, it will be released and off by default. So you can definitely use it in production that time. It will be on by default from 10 or 36 and then in future it will also become mandatory. OK, so we are coming towards the end. Let's talk about the key takeaways based on our learnings from free text invoicing posting. We have been working on these features and testing it from last more than a year, and 
this is we want this is what we want to share with you please do performance uh, load testing a recurring testing where you can take that load again and again and test it based on these features we highly recommend enable all of those features if you can if not for whatever reasons yeah please try to do more and more so that you can see the latest and greatest features coming and get those optimal performances you are looking for there is one caveat we, we we definitely want to mention about the feature of divide and conquer i call it uh, enhanced performance for source document if you are using auto settlement uh, then you will not be able to use that it will go to old logic if you are doing posting in interactive mode as ryan also mentioned in the demo it will not go to the split logic it will go to basically all all the way in the linear way uh, what we showed earlier if you are using the localization of hungary and also if you are using free text invoicing with retail on uh, with the via retail pass you are creating the retail transactions and creating free text invoice then also it will not go here i did mention this one uh, the third point here uh, free text invoice batch posting for process improvement this uh, will definitely help you if you are turning on priority based batch scheduling and are you you are facing some challenges with that and it's coming in 10 or 31. Last but not the least, this is subledger journal transfer. This job has been in system from very, very long time. And what we have seen is if you want to achieve better performance with subledger posting, please change it to async batch transfer mode, not the scheduled batch mode. What I mean with that is let me show you a quick demo over here where it is. So if you go to general ledger parameters, you will see batch transfer rules. And this is the setup, setup batch transfer rules for sub ledger journal account entries. And the transfer mode, for if you are struggling with the performance with it, keep it as asynchronous. And what it will do, it will use what we showed in the demo, the process automation framework. You saw that job two down, uh, it was about the sub ledger to GL transfer, and this is what process automation framework will pick on from the asynchronous one. All right, I think we are coming towards the end. It has been a brief demo. A, uh, we talked about three features, and yeah, if you have any questions, as we said earlier, we will have ample time for Q&A over here, and yeah. I will ask Eric, who has been monitoring our chats for Q&A, if we have any interesting question which we need to pick over here. Um, there were a couple of questions related to uh, the individual steps, either uh, retrying, you know, re when one step fails, it needs to be retried, and you know, and the idea is that each step is independent and retrying a step doesn't, if it's step fails and then retries, it doesn't really change the end result, right? Once it makes it through a step, that step is complete and it's more or less independent from the last steps. Uh, one specific question was, what about a difference between the subledger and the GL uh, until the uh, until the transfer happens? And that is true, but that's been that way for quite a while, ever since source documents came around, right? you have to run the GL transfer and the asynchronous option uh, ultimately runs it quite quickly. So um, using that, uh, it's more or less independent of this change, but if you use asynchronous for your batch transfers, your GL should not be far behind your subledger. Yeah. I don't know if Jason or Ryan has anything to add, but. I'll just add that, um, you know, this, you know, like you said, it's typically we, you see the schedules on the process automation. It was five minutes for transfer and 15 minutes. You know, you can adjust that, you know, down uh, if you like to see that happening faster. But um, the basically, yeah, th there is a small amount of time where your sub ledger and your general ledger you know, don't have the same amounts. We have the obviously the reconciliation reports and and we also have the new window that we provided if you ever need to 
verify like a month end that everything is in sync. Yeah, I think I'm going to jump in. I know there's a handful of questions there, Saurabh, that are coming in. Um, yeah, related. and before that, I just want to reiterate one thing, Ryan, or maybe yeah. you is these all are separate flows now, separate processes. The whole thing of posting is divided into, let's say, three posting processes. One for doing the free text invoicing posting, one is doing the journalization, and one is doing the transfer to GL. With these smaller scope transactions, we are able to achieve that performance. And these all are running in their own flows. So if something is not ready, let's say not post it to subledger here, it will not do the journalization. If something is not journalized, it will not go to the next step. So you are safe there. If something fail for a particular record, you, you, you in the next run, it will pick it up. And just to note as well, um, we, we've also added features in other areas of the product, like at period close, we verify that there aren't any documents that have not generated the accounting yet. So we don't want you close the period until all the accounting's been generated to ensure that um, there isn't a mistake. Because once the period is closed, obviously, then we can't generate accounting into that period. So that's why we do that additional validation check. Yeah, so and jumping into, I know there's a handful of questions, Sarab, with the um, extra form and the ability to change the dimensions and the concern with maybe the inconsistency between the document and the voucher that's generated and sent to the general ledger. Um, and just to kind of clarify a little bit more, we can drill into this and maybe update our documentation um, uh, that's been published, just to be very crisp on what can can't be changed and how that impacts the difference between the subledger and accounts receivable and the voucher in the general ledger. So the one difference would be we were only changing the accounting distribution. That accounting distribution is tied just to the free text invoice line. And so that free text invoice line um, is really just a revenue account that you're hitting for that invoice. And all of the customer transaction itself that has a dimension that will be coming from the free text invoice header record itself. Uh, we didn't change that and that would not be a direct discrepancy. Um, there might be a few scenarios we can still look at and make sure that there's not a uh, something strange, but but a lot of it is, um, you know, where we would allow the end users to have a completely different set of dimensions on the accounting distributions today without the feature enabled, and those would not be the same dimensions that are utilized on your customer transaction that gets recorded in your accounts receivable subledger. So the, the, the hope is, or the goal of this whole feature is that we didn't really change any functionality that wasn't there already today. Um, we're really just making it faster. Um, and a little bit of functionality in there with that form. Let's see, we got a few more questions coming in. Yeah, Ryan, um, here's one. Uh, what would be the total number of new batch tasks I need to schedule to so that it acts like it does today? Yeah, so with these features turned on, the goal is that there really is just the one large batch of free text invoices that you schedule, you send it off. Um, and so we don't have to worry about it with that that second or that kind of was a third feature mentioned in the in the slide deck. Um, all of these together should make it as almost as hands off as possible for that big batch of invoices that are coming in at a night process. You schedule it when you want it to start and then you can kind of help uh, cue that accounting framework processor if you give that that's why that 15 minute delay was kind of a good um, middle ground to start with um, tweak it for your environment so that you can say all the invoicing batch will happen as fast as it can then it'll start running the journalization and getting all that accounting generated kind of a little bit later a little delay there um, but you should be able to just use that one big batch um, and one of the others that are technical on the batch threads um, I I don't think we need to mess with the individual batch setting as well with the new features turned on. Yeah, just to add, right, when you have PBS on, you should not worry about how many batch threads or batch tasks I need to give. When you turn on this particular feature, it will automatically calculate behind the scene. It has that smart logic and it will know, OK, how many threads best for your environment will be. And also one more thing I want to highlight here is you might be using this particular field, documents per task, right, to optimize the batch and posting processing. When you use the third feature, which we mentioned over here, 
this field is not of use. So whatever you set here, it will not matter. Why? Because we are going for another pattern which will have the fixed number of threads and it will automatically work in the optimal way with the new posting process. So yeah, we don't want you to move or think how many batch tasks I need to give for each job that all should be smart enough. System should take care of it. If the threads are available, it will take care of them. Um, Brian and Sarab, if uh, one one other question here, um, if and you might need to uh, clarify the question a little bit, but I think I think you know enough to do that. Uh, what if the accounting processing failed and cannot be fixed for certain lines under the header? Would the line status be not posted? What about ha what happens to the header status in that scenario? Uh, go ahead. Oh, I can comment on that a little bit. So the status from the subledger perspective, because this is, you know, again, this, these things are are separate. They've always been separate statuses, separate tasks. They just were combined in a single database transaction. So the status of the the lines and the header, you know, are posted. The when we go to generalize the accounting. There's, you know, we've looked at all the different scenarios and there you know, we're able to fix, you know, all the different types of accounting issues that come up. Sometimes it's bad rules on the account structure. You know, sometimes it's uh, incorrect defaulting changes, but we're able to adjust those um, through either changing the accounts and the dimensions or by, you know, updating the accounting rules to, <coughs> um you know allow the proper posting because those are the typical types of mistakes ryan you want to add on to that it, well it's, i'll just say quick before ryan that it okay. sounds like if you get into that scenario you probably need to open a support case because it's sort of not expected go ahead ryan if you have any yeah it was i guess from a free text invoice um i'm not sure that there is a line status that we're tracking the status that we had on the this page was the accounting status for that entire document and so the accounting for the set of lines will be either completed or still in process and in process would represent if you know that you only get to see the error state on the documents pending accounting and that would give you the, the error and the error log to look at um one other question uh how does how do these changes work with billing classification functionality Yeah, there's in no intended what, change. <laughs> in okay. what sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you is, can, is there any change? I think was is the yeah the person who asked was hoping that there was no change. Yeah. So far as right now, there's no intended change. Um, certainly, if there's issues, it's still in preview. We do want to address any issues as it's in preview, and that's the feedback we were looking for on the slide. So, uh, if we see something that doesn't work as you expect, and just let us know, please, support case or some other mechanism, and we'll. Good yeah, we great. We had a couple questions around like, uh, um, like you know, linking the linkings between subledger and GL and all that. And the general answer I think is that none of that is really changed. So the 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 links and everything, the voucher, you know, the drill downs that you're expecting that you're used to, will still work. If they don't, that's some feedback that we need because it's probably a, a problem of some sort or we can figure that out but it's not expected yeah. to change any of that stuff if that is correct i mean the the voucher for the invoice is generated at the time of the subledger poster posting we utilize that voucher that was generated at posting you know to bring the data the accounting into gl and set up the links that were there previously right gl's always had the voucher right gl's got its own journal number too but the voucher from the subledgers there as well. So no change. There is one more question, a new one from Frank. Can the invoice be paid or settled before the accounting side is posted? If so, if the accounting structure is blocking the accounting posting, how to solve this? 
Ryan, you want to answer that? Yeah. One? So today, that is um, one caveat that's called out in the feature description as well, that um, documents cannot be settled, their payments can be made until that accounting is completed. Um, so the question then is, well, what if I have a account structure problem that's blocking this accounting posting? Um, and that is actually one of the use cases that we've discussed is uh, there could be a whole batch that fails and it's largely because there was an account structure change that happened that was incorrect. So that account structure either, you know, hopefully that account structure change can be made, um, it'll be revalidated and then it'll let that whole batch go through and generate that accounting properly um, as soon as that account structure was corrected. Um, if that isn't the case, it looks like there might be still something deeper happening, but uh, that that's how we intended the feature that you can fix the account structure in one go. All of that batch of documents then can get their accounting journalized and everything should go through properly. There is some validation on the accounting distributions right up front. Um, so they really, I, I kind of have a small contrived example um, in my demo, um, allowing the accounting to happen and then I made an error state and then I tried to push it through. So generally speaking, that should give you a proper uh, um, validation right on the distribution as it's being created if it's invalid or not right up front. Um, some of the other accounting that's happening after the fact, um, obviously those would be ones that would be a subject to the account structure um, during that journalization step and that's the ones that you'd have to look at a little deeper and see if there's an error at the account structure. Correct that and let it go. Cool. Yeah. And one more thing I want to add uh, the new form. You saw document spending accounting. Right now, that doesn't have a linking from free text invoice page or your own particular record. That linking is not there. We will be building that link that will help you to go to particular record from the journalization side if one person is looking at that and they can directly go to that reference record. So that will also come soon on that which is not there right now in this, if you enable the feature, but yes, linking one will come. And if you have more feedback on that, please yeah, use Yammer, Idea Portal, and share your feedback on that. I do have one interesting question, and maybe Jason, you can answer this. When we say for better performance with subledger journal transfer, use the async transfer mode and not the scheduled batch one. Do we have any scenario you can think of, uh, Jason, where customers should use a scheduled batch job and not the async batch transfer mode? There are not many, um, that's for sure. I mean, scheduled batch is uh, more of a legacy option that we've had for, for many years, so we have not deprecated it, but there's been many enhancements gone in um, on the async transfer to reduce database transaction size, make it more efficient, you know, not cause blocking, you know, with, for journal postings and things like that, um, that have not gone into the scheduled batch. So with that, you know, I highly recommend using the async transfer and turning on the performance features for the async transfer. Um, but there was one scenario where a customer needed to, I'm not exactly sure there's some reasons, but they needed to, you know, block their accounting from going to GL and they only wanted it transferred once a month. And from that perspective, um, you know, the, the scheduled batch worked well for them uh, mm -hmm. to limit that, but that's the only scenario I've seen. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know and that. we do have a plan to uh, update that the documentation for the subledger transfer to you know to recommend async more clearly perfect perfect thank you eric for that yeah team if you have any other questions this is the perfect time to ask um what about intercompany invoices as they are raised for the project module but come under free text invoice like that uh, might be the last question yeah one more time can you repeat eric yep yeah, uh the question is what about intercompany invoices that are raised uh, i think from the project module but it creates free text invoices not project invoices for that scenario for intercompany is that i'm not familiar with the area i'm just reading the question sorry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, likewise, Eric, that's a great question. And uh, I, I don't have context around the inner company invoicing coming from project module directly. So I'll have to um, make sure that as a scenario that we uh, give a good testing through as we get to the state of the feature. Um, so yeah, I don't in, have a direct answer. In general, I would expect the free text invoice, you know, if that's being generated as part of the posting of the project invoice, I'd expect the subledger posting of the free text invoice to happen, you know, with that posting. That's typically how we handle those situations in the past. Uh, but the journalization would be delayed just like it is today, which should be fine. Uh, I don't anticipate any extra issues related to that. So. And I think if there's any any, you know, if there is a restriction, it would get added. We'll we know about it now. We'll we'll review it and we'll add it to the docs article if it, there is any sort of a restriction. Yeah, that's a good good point. Brings up the <clears throat> one other question that has come before is you know whether are there limitations and there is one known with the hungry localization. So if you have your environment or the legal entity essentially running in the hungry country context, uh, that would just fall, simply fall back to the old. You know, as mentioned before, it would fall back to the old logic and and not split out the uh, the work. You wouldn't get the performance gain. Yep. So if there's anything with these project invoices, we'll we'll cover it, add it similar to these. If anything comes out of it, thank you for the question. Another great question I see uh, during the demo. It seems the number of FTI has been used, even if it's not posted. Basically, the question is: Is it possible to post FTI one getting posted before FTI two? So my answer would be: When you are running it in interactive mode, you are controlling which particular free text invoice you are posting mm -hmm. first or next. But when you are in the batch mode, at that time, yes, it can happen. It may post FTI two first and FTI one later. So that is definitely a possibility. All right, one other question just coming in for testing around free text, uh, sorry, fixed assets with the free text invoice. Um, and if that's been tested fully. Um, we did have one test pattern, uh, test pass through fixed asset adding to a free text invoice. And again, that um, posting should happen as it's expected and just the accounting um, under the, at the journalization step was on its own path. And that, um, so we did have that test run through. So if there's any, any more issues that get uncovered again in preview here, let us know. We'll get them addressed for a release date. Yeah, I mean, all subledger postings are still happening in the posting step so if <clears throat> you've got you know updates that have to happen to the asset subledger as well as the ar subledger those things happen in the main database transaction as ryan pointed out it's just the generation of the accounting for the invoice that's delayed yep this is a super important point thank you Shiram, for asking that I think we are good. I don't see any more new questions. Thank you so much everyone for asking these great questions. Thank you for your time. I will give the floor to Brad over here. All right, thanks Zara. To all of our attendees out there, I have posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We would love to get your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation on that. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. And finally, we'll end today's broadcast by extending a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today. Have a great day ahead, everyone.